Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello. Hello. Something. Something. Who knows what we're doing wrong? What are we doing wrong? We're getting Hello. Hello. Okay. Uh, Let's give us a few seconds. Let's keep up hitting those in the waiting room. I'm uh, not IT service, so I can't help in any way. You seem to have sorted it out. Maybe it was just going to be here, man. And then, see? Uh, and then, then your voice started to do that again. Okay. I'll keep my voice down. <laughs> To be doing, can you assist us? What are we supposed to do? So, what if I've, I've done it? I can still hear the echo. You can still hear the echo? Yeah. Okay, let me do something again. Uh, can you still hear the echo? No. Okay. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Let, before we clap, let me show that I got it right on this side. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This is perfect. I'm sure. <laughs> oh yeah, Bolali, please help help me confirm that the sound is good. Can you hear us very well? Can you hear us well? Somebody help me confirm. Somebody say something loud and clear. Thank awesome. you. All right. So not no echo. No echo. All right. Okay. Hallelujah. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, it's almost five minutes uh, after the hour. Mm -hmm. So um, welcome again to the 25 lessons in 25 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's becoming like 25 coins with two sides, a head and a tail. You know, so she has 25 lessons she's learned, and I have like 45 lessons <laughs> I've learned, but I just squeeze out like just 25 out of that 95. Oh, so, it's because I told you I have 25, I have 1,000, that's 644 million. I know, I know, I'm an encyclopedia, I'm a messenger, I have, I, I'm a faculty to be studied. <laughs> Yes. You know. <laughs> so today, I uh, remember last, um, we started with uh, my wife, she opened the series, and then last week we had a tag team with me um, speaking, and then she helping us with the interviews and all. Today, we are going to bring the ball back in her court. She is going to be the one sharing with us uh, from her own wealth of beautiful experience with this 
trouble free guy. Very you know, trouble free. He never kill a fly. Yeah, just perfect. he's just he's just perfect. He's too perfect. That 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 could be his problem sometimes. Know, you know. Yeah. So with Jesus joy, Hallelujah. let's welcome <laughs> the first student who's graduating from this this Ivy League school uh -huh. of mercy. So how do you take it away? Okay. Nice to be back here. Happy to see everyone. Please, you know how Saturdays can be. If you can help us remind a few people oh, that we are here and we are up and moving. Dr. Tinde Shegu is here. Sister Yawa is here. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Jill Gold, Nicholas. And um, hello, that's what we see. You can't see the full names, but everyone is so celebrated. Bolale, God bless you all the time. Not hearing anything someone says. No, Can't not not. It's the system talking. Okay, that's okay. So everybody can still hear us. A minute that you can't hear us again, kindly let us know. Please tag your friends, invite them, let them know that this is ongoing. Hallelujah. And as always, we're just going to make you pick of the numbers from number one to 25. Maybe I want to do today, don't pick between one and 10. Not like all of them are gone, but I think- um, You did five already. I did five already. But anyway, okay. Between one and 25, you can pick any number and we'll go with your number. So anybody pick a number and we will go with it. May I have my complete 25, but I plan to do more. Okay. Like, you, like yeah, my dear yeah, husband yeah. said, he's discovered every day. Your goal says number 20. God bless you. I like number that. Number 20. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. It says, don't ever leave your spouse without defense. That's a lesson that I have learned. Don't ever leave your spouse without defense. You must be their city of refuge. You must be a defense round about them. Your husband your kids, your wife, you know, do not ever leave them without defense. Be their edge of fire roundabout. Make sure you are not the one. Yay, my auntie Jade is here. Hi, auntie. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you so much for coming. So this is 25 lessons in 25 years. Congratulations, guys. I'm happy, happy, happy for you. Your and, marriage will continue to be a testimony and an inspiration. I'm amen. so proud of you guys. Congratulations, congratulations. Uh, thank, thank you. you. So thank you so much. Thank you. So like, I'll read that again. Don't ever leave your spouse without defense. I've, I, I, I know this experientially over the years that every family have their own secrets. Everyone have something that they are not telling. So sometimes the secrets of your family or what makes your family weak, and I'm choosing my words, most times we are the ones that tell it out. Most times we are the ones that push our spouses out there. We make their weaknesses known. We tell the world informations that we don't need everybody to have about them. We push it out. That's the truth. We push it out. We make others. I don't know if I'm making sense. Am I saying it properly? We tell the world information they don't need. I'm not saying die with your pain. I'm not saying when things go wrong, you should not speak out. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying select who is worthy of those information. That's one major secret that I have learned in 25 years. Find your place. Be a refuge around your spouse. Don't tell the world everything bad about your spouse. We all are trusting God for one miracle or the other, but you go out there to talk bad of God. You keep speaking your faith. You keep speaking those things that you want to see. Nobody ever says, no, God, da, da. no, 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 no. We keep praising him. We keep living by faith. We keep declaring by that one day, that thing that we are hoping for will happen. So that's a major lesson that I've learned. That's my number 20. Don't leave your spouse or your children, your husband or your wife, without defense be their defense don't be the reason why the world will mock them or laugh at them because of what you told and don't forget what i said i'm not saying you should not talk find that safe space person that can cover you despite what they need 
Thank you. I hope that makes sense. Okay, what other number should I do? My husband said I should be that she don't stretch it too much. No, 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 no. Please. Please. Oh, okay. That's a new lesson you are learning today. No, stretch it. Stretch it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, dear God. God bless you. So um I said be their defense, be their strong reason. One of the things that build a family is to embrace their strength and their weakness. No human being is a total perfection. So as you embrace their strength, embrace their weakness, and be that person that makes excuse for their weakness. Because now by and inside information, you know why they do what they do. I'm not indulging or endorsing bad behavior, but I'm saying um, be that city of refuge. That's just it. If you know the concept of the city of refuge, you know, even if you have done wrong, God created a place where his own children can run into. And as long as you are in that city of refuge, do you know that you can't be harmed? It's when you come out of the city of refuge that you open yourself. Can you can't be punished as long as you're in the city of refuge. Hello, Uncle Nicholas and Eloho. Great to see you. Number 16, you say. Part of the critical, can you give any example in your marriage where you had to be a city of refuge? A city of uh, where you had to be the defense. Okay. That's the opportunity. All asking. right. Thank you, Doc, for asking. Um, one of the reasons why. Um, my parents, I can speak for myself, one of the reasons why they respected our marriage was that no matter what turbulence we went through, and trust me, the first five years of our marriage was quite turbulent for me. I don't know about my husband, but for me, it was quite turbulent. I hadn't understood him. I didn't understand him at all. I don't understand him now. Well, I'm at least like maybe, <laughs> maybe 5%. <laughs> But I never picked my phone once to call home to report my husband, not to my dad, not to my mom. There was once I was so upset with my husband and there was such a funny connection between my dad and I. The day something is not going well with me, he has a way of calling. You know, even if he had not called for two months, three months, I mean, time will go, he wouldn't call. But once I'm distressed, once something is not going right with me, my dad always picked it and he will call. And he used to call me by my pet name. He won't call me, to, you know, like many people else. My dad will call my name in full. And the day he did that, I broke down and I wept. And he was just saying, ha, ah, ha, ah, ha. Ah. You know that how of a father of how can, what, what, what is, can I help you kill the doer of this problem? But you know what? I did not say anything. I did not tell him because I knew telling him when the matter is solved, when the matter is over, he may not respect my husband anymore. And I didn't want that. So, yeah, we spoke with our pastor. We talked to, yeah, our pastor really was that one person in our lives that we felt very comfortable telling our lives to, you know, but I never exposed my husband to my parents. Then <laughs> uh, somebody said number 16. Okay. Number 16. Um, God will not put you as a corrector to your spouse. Each time it comes to you, he wants to talk to you about you. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense, but I'll try to explain. When there is a uh, a, a challenge in your marriage you are angry because you feel your spouse has done something that is so bad and that's why you are angry and all of that but one thing i've learned in 25 years is that for your marriage to make progress god wants to talk to you about you it takes two to tango if there has been a lockdown lockdown in communication lockdown in intimacy lockdown in finances lockdown in anything don't think only your spouse is to blame. You have a part that you have played to make things degenerate. And when God, when when God wants to step in, like in the battle of the Jericho, the, the wall of Jericho, when the angel of the Lord came down and Joshua asked him, As what have you come? Have you come for? He said, I've not come to take sides with anyone. I've come to take over. When God comes to your marriage to fix things, He doesn't want to take sides with you. So don't think because um, I'm not, it's never going to be okay. 
for your spouse to hit you or for you to hit your spouse of no it's never going to be okay but even if such a thing happens god is not going to come and take sides with you it takes side with the marriage it takes side with the marriage how that marriage will not fall how that marriage will not crumble how things will not fall and you know you won't push your marriage into the hands of the devil it takes side with the marriage and he's going to talk to you about you he's going to talk to you about the role you have played to keep things where it has or, or to keep things um um to fix things from where it has fallen or cracked so that's a major lesson that i have learned in 25 years that god wants to talk to me about the roles that i play and not to paint my husband so black you understand and that way you are repairing your side. You are fixing your end. You are repenting for the role that you play when things go bad. That's one major role that I have learned. It is like uh, plastic was talking about putting the sex life on exactly. yourself yes. when you want to make repairs so that you don't approach your partner like Ed Master yes. wanted to correct his students. Mm -hmm. That you take responsibility for your role yes. and that softens your heart mm -hmm. when you are now approaching your partner for reconciliation. Yes. So you are not just coming with um, uh, uh, a list of charges mm -hmm. you are coming with a complaint or an observation mm -hmm. that you are coming already armed with uh, uh taking responsibility for your own complicity mm -hmm. in the matter mm -hmm. so that in that way you are saying i didn't like this that you did so mm -hmm. let me ask you a question i didn't like this which you did but i i own up that i did abc to contribute to what led you to do this in that way mm -hmm. because i think one thing we've learned in marriage is this we are both lawyers mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, people as intelligent and constructively cerebral mm -hmm. as us uh, don't particularly like losing arguments or losing grounds mm -hmm. you know but if you if you come into marriage for your marriage to work you have to put the search light on yourself that mm -hmm. i'm not trying to win an argument mm -hmm. over you mm -hmm. i'm saying that the marriage is out of alignment. Yeah. This is what you said. This is what it made me feel. Mm -hmm. But already I know this was what I did that made you say what you said. And from that point, it becomes a lot easier for the erring partner to rise up and offer you an apology. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are the one speaking today. But, mm -hmm. you know, I just learned recently that apart from sorry, there's no other dictionary word for apology. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, honestly, but it's not. Know, so that when, when people say, uh, you're always saying you are sorry, you're always saying you are sorry, mm -hmm. there's nothing else to be said. No, but you know, when it comes to God, for example, yes. there is a way to tell you that somebody will suffer. Mm -hmm. There is a way to communicate and I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. that that person will know that you're not playing with words and mm -hmm. you're not trying playing to with the emotion. Okay. You, you, you are genuinely not happy with yourself for what you have done. And the person can see and it can comfort that person more, much more that I'm not being taken for granted in the relationship. Mm. And when you said sorry, mm. it carried a weight mm. with it that we truly are. Yeah. Okay. So what other number? That's two for today. Two for today. Three more to go. Someone picked 22. Who is the person that picked 22? Uh, dear Gold, someone picked number 22 before 16. Oh, okay. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Um, okay. So you are going to 22 Yes, now. I want to do 22 now, and it's very, very interesting. And these are lessons, I mean, lessons that has worked for me, and I'm praying that it will work for somebody because it comes by the wisdom of God. So it says, rules will change on your marital journey get used to changes in role and be flexible with the demands of marriage. Oh. Should, I, should I say that again? Roles will change on your marital journey. Get used to the changes and be flexible with the demands of marriage. Sometimes it's financial roles. Sometimes it's parenting roles. It can be leadership roles. There must be such orientation of teamwork in your marriage. If you want your marriage to work, please get comfortable with the change in 
um, in the roles. One of the things that are maybe difficult for many people in their marriage is the inability to understand that roles can change. Maybe at the beginning of the marriage, the husband was the one who was greatly doing, doing well financially. But as you journey, the roles can change. The wife can be the one that is now blessed financially. It should not diminish the honor, the regard, the respect that you have for your spouse. Just know it that the money that God has blessed the marriage with is for the benefit of the marriage. A lot of people cannot accept role change. The husband may not even be able to accept role change. That, ah, ah, how can I um, you know, accept for my wife to pay the bills? And we're not, you're not accepting it. It's just what it is. We are a team. We are a team. And the same can go for, we know that the man is the head of his family but you know that leadership role can change sometimes it comes with a man who has understood the strength of his wife in a given place i don't know if that makes sense this the, he has mastered the strength of his wife and he knows that except i'm funny i will give let me just shut down and help her to push that leadership role and my classic is deborah I'm sure Mr. Lapidot noticed that there is something strong about this, my wife. She's too gifted. She's too multi-talented. I can't keep her at home and say, just stay here and be turning a mala for me. You are a global woman. There's no point in us, you know, arguing about that. I listened to Pastor Irem someday and he was saying something like this. That, um, that they, why did they go? Okay. Okay, somebody needs to mute. Shall I go on? Go ahead. You know, that you will be a funny man. If, for example, your wife becomes the president of Nigeria, you'll be a funny man if you are still insisting that um, um, you will still be doing what you're doing. See, the, the, the pride for who she has become to push you to help her to become the finest female president ever. And I'm like, what this guy is saying is against the typical African mindset, but it is the truth. And I must give it to my husband as a kudos. These 25 years, he has enabled me. He has equipped me. He has released my wings to fly. Fly as high as you want. And even me, my head is correct. I'm not, oh, I'm not floating on it, and I'm not trying to swap roles and all of that. Okay. So, so total my okay. head is this. No, as you travel oh, oh, oh. Roles change for you to be flexible so that both of you can do it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's three. That's three. <laughs> you are doing quite well. Thank you. Your use of time is so perfect. Thank you. <laughs> you know. Okay. Um, who wants to pick the next one? Somebody who has not already picked. Um, go ahead and suggest what should be the next number. I think I want Auntie Jade to pick a number. Oh, that's <laughs> what I was just about to say. <laughs> wow. Auntie Jade, please pick a number. I was just about to say that. <laughs> you know. So, Auntie Me, we are waiting for you. Oh, so I didn't finish reading my 22. I'm just seeing something. Can I just finish reading uh, it? Uh, hold on. Let's Let's get uh, okay. uh, Auntie Jade. We want you to pick the next one. Okay, all right, go ahead, finish. Uh, okay, your thoughts on so I'm going to read it again. I, I just realized that I didn't finish. I said, I said, roles will change on your marital journey, get used to changes, and be flexible with the demands of marriage. Um, I said, financial responsibility role can change. Don't put your spouse under too much pressure in this season. God is a rewarder. Wow. And maybe that is for a lady. A lot of women don't understand that when things are going on in your marriage, you're actually writing God's exam. Wow. It's not your husband that is marking your script. Wow. It's God that is marking your script. He wants to see whether you're only about the good time. So when the bad time comes, you'll be like Job's wife. That's a cause God and die. Wow. What do you mean? No, a wise woman will know how to be a defense in that moment. 
Do you understand? To yes. say, well, a role has security, but it does not. We are moving the family to forward. And Pastor Christy from Ottawa has picked number 17. Okay, Pastor Christy, number 17. Hmm. Okay. Um, and for your information, Pastor Christy was one of us at Mission to Singles in Abuja oh, wow. before she relocated. <laughs> oh, wow, Pastor Christy. God it's pastoring now in other words. Oh, wow, awesome, awesome. I hope you can put something like this together for us to come and do in other words. That would really Oh, no, wonderful. I told her we were coming with Apostle Israel. Okay. So she's expecting. Amazing, mm -hmm. amazing. Okay. Okay, 17. So I said, why did Aaron build a golden cow? I was asking the question. So why did Aaron build a golden cow? I said, if you don't dethrone all rival thrones, mm. you will worship another god. Mm. That was a, that's that that is a major, major lesson that I learned. If you don't dethrone all rival thrones, all other gods, all other gods, all other gods in your marriage, you will worship another god. If you don't dethrone other pe people you are attracted to, be it a guy or a girl, whatever you know, <laughs> Aaron did not set out to worship a golden calf. Oh. That was not his objective. He saw God. He heard God. He was appointed by God. At what point did he begin to worship another God? One, the pressure of the people. They are the ones that said, "We don't." When you don't understand what is going on in your marriage, have your thing with God. Don't allow yourself. What's that? They are speaking right now. You know, don't allow yourself to worship your pain. Don't allow yourself to worship what you don't have in your marriage. Don't allow yourself to worship your challenges. Don't allow yourself, because if you do, the devil will give you plan B, plan C, plan Z. Before you know it, you start going back to your Facebook. This my husband is not performing. Let me go to my old boyfriend. That guy used to know how to take care of me. He used to know how to talk to me. Me, I won't sleep with him. Oh, that's not what is a lie. The devil does not have a measure. If you give him a tiny hole, it's all he needs to still kill and destroy. Yeah. Aaron never set out to worship another God. So why is adultery such a big deal in marriages today? Because many people did not shut the door against rival thrones. You are not going to marry a perfect person. When that imperfection shows make sure you have such a connection with God. Otherwise, you will go and worship the strange God. That was exactly what happened to Aaron. When they didn't see Moses anymore, they didn't hear the voice of God anymore, and the people began to do things that they didn't understand, they just said, give me your jewelry, give me your jewelry. So it's not jewelry that God is against. It's the mindset of a rival throne. All this, I don't have any problem with you talking with your exes and all of those, but have a boundary. Yeah, I have, have problems with that. Okay. Yeah. You'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, have boundaries, sneaky conversations, unnecessary exposure, unnecessary reporting. Ah, that my husband is not like you. You care. Ah, I know you very well now. You're a wonderful guy. You are not satisfied sexually in your marriage. You are not your old boyfriend begin to talk. And like, ah, Andrew, I remember you now. I'm not used to you. You are setting yourself up for destruction. Don't open another God. God said, Thou shalt have no other God. So we're not saying that your marriage will not have its challenges, but make sure that the challenges don't push you to build a golden calf. If you build another golden calf, you will worship it. And you know, in that same vein, mm -hmm. you got to be careful with what looks like innocent lean on, mm -hmm. innocent befriending, mm -hmm. you know, um, so it may not go sexual, yeah. just like that. Mm. It may just start with that innocent friendship, mm. innocent confidant, mm. innocent uh, chat up. Mm. I am bored. Mm. So I'm lonely. Should, I'm, it doesn't even come to lonely yet. Mm. Just I am bored. Who mm. should I chat up now? Mm. Uh, innocent this, innocent that, mm. innocent. What are you wearing today? Ah. Uh, we are on a voice call, but I can't see you. What mm. are you wearing? Mm. All of those mm. um, 
quasi innocent sounding you know chats mm. and play remember mm. it is not going well in your marriage mm. therefore if you begin to um, allow yourself to play in these soft waters mm. your heart is not designed to know you are wearing a ring mm. your heart is not designed to know that you are married yeah your heart is only designed to feel emotions. Uh, Whether it is lawful or unlawful, mm -hmm. that's a different ball game. Absolutely. So if you carry your heart into that place, you are playing, mm -hmm. you are chatting, mm -hmm. you are confiding, mm -hmm. uh, you are getting rid of boredom, mm -hmm. you are leaning on that person. Mm -hmm. uh, there's this thing I want to do, but I just wonder your opinion before mm -hmm. I make my final decision. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes... You might be innocent, mm. but your innocent uh, 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 um, fraternity mm. might mean more than innocent to the other person. Mm. That ah, this is I'll dress up and go out of this house. My spouse doesn't ask me. Mm. Uh, doesn't say you look good. Doesn't ask me what are you wearing. But this person is concerned about mm. about what I wear. My spouse makes decisions without even my input. This one is concerned about my input. Things mm. like that. Mm. Please hear this. If you are writing, write this down. Mm. The devil is a long game planner. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he, he's a long game planner. Mm. If it's going to take him three years mm. of just playing 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 with you, mm. chapem, chapem, before he launches the tumbu, mm. he will do it. Mm. So as as you go in your own journey of 25 years or more, Dr. Tunde has already crossed the 25, I, oh, think, that's yeah. 30. I think so. Yeah. yeah. You know, so uh, as you're making this journey, just always remind yourself. Uh, this is something God told me the other day. You are only beautiful mm -hmm. when you stand straight in your office. Mm -hmm. Once you leave your office, you begin to look ugly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You are, you, you, are, you are looking good because you are standing before that other person mm -hmm. as husband mm. of one wife. Mm. You are standing before that person as I am married. Mm. Don't allow yourself to be so um, flattered mm. by their compliments mm. that you now leave your office mm. of being married to mm. try to become familiar. Mm. Once you begin to look familiar, your ugliness has Absolutely. started because you, you, you are not as good when you are in your weakness, yeah. but when you stand straight in your strength mm. and you just keep honoring the vows that you have made, mm. that's when you eternally look handsome, mm. look so desirable, mm. and you look like, wow, your spouse is so blessed to have had you. If everybody feels that they have access to you, they will not respect what you have with your spouse. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for saying that. And you know, it, a slogan came to my heart as you spoke. Whatever you give attention to, you, develop you have an affection for you. That's a true. You know, even when you didn't set out yes. to do wrong, yeah. this flesh, ah, yes. don't trust your flesh. Uh -huh. Don't lean on it. Huh? That's why Colossians said mortify. Uh -huh. That's the word that was used to describe what God wants us to do with this flesh. Uh -huh. they kill it. Kill it. And you see, the hunger of this flesh does not stop. It just wants and wants. So, Heal the desires of your flesh. Whatever you give attention to, you will have an affection for. It's just a matter of time. So I noticed that earlier our parents, they had a lot of boundaries in their marital relationship. They didn't have a lot of revelations. They didn't have a lot of scripture. But there was some, maybe their strict sense, intelligence. They had boundaries. I think lewdness and um, a whole lot of things started happening when the world went corporate. Corporate, mm. you know. Corporate and the sexual revolution Thank actually you. destroyed all boundaries. All boundaries. You know, in Post those days, when, when women want to even retire their rapper, yes. they'll turn back yes. so that they are not facing you as the they man. They don't want you they to have an open idea. Them, but they just yes. want to. Why should you know? Adjust. Why should, Why should you, you know? Be involved. That's too much. That's too much. But with the, with the sexual revolution, oh no, I hope you can see. You it's know? in fact, sexy is in vogue. People are deliberate to be sexy. So the stake is higher. Men dress sexy. Women are sexy. The married is sexy. The single is sexy has become a thing. If you don't protect yourself, you will fall a victim. Don't give attention to anything that does not require your attention. 
build strong boundaries around yourself. Don't even be a judge. Mm. Look at what that one is wearing. That's on your business. Just save your eyes. Mm. Save your eyes. Because see, the, the, the devil works with the flesh. Mm. God works with our spirit. Yes. And whatever the flesh sees, mm. it's difficult for it to forget. Yes. You know, honey, how that sometimes a piece of music is playing old school. And it's you know, your... celebrate good times. Come on. And you are sitting down and suddenly you thought we are going to sing gospel. Mm. You are hearing cool as the gun. Yeah. It just comes to you. Yeah. you didn't pr- the same thing happens. Mm. Once you have seen you walk away because you didn't pull away. Mm. That picture will come back again. Mm. And as the picture is coming back, mm. the devil is doing something uh, deliberate. Mm. He's using the reminder of the picture to weaken mm. your own resistance mm. against the immoral connotation mm. of that whole picture. So, you know, one of my, um, I think it was Samuel that, Pastor Samuel that said this thing and he clicked. He mm. said, build your strongest your strongest defenses in your weakest place. Yes, yes. Build your strongest defense about yes. your weakest place. Yes. If you are weak with yellow women, mm. don't fill your life with the diary of yellow women. Mm. Everybody Look knows. Look for black ones. <laughs> are you yeah? drawn to black women or yellow women? I'm drawn to black women. So I married a <laughs> black woman. I... Okay, let's not go into that. That's another <laughs> subject she's trying to open See, right there. Okay, build your defense yeah. around your weakest link, and to thyself be true. Yeah. We all know what we kill us. So don't yeah. think that if you get to where you'll be shocked that you got there. People that yeah. are going to where they know they are going yeah. because you know. And let me tell you another truth: we all have a price. Yeah. What is your price? Uh, make sure the devil cannot afford you. Remove the price. Remove time. it. Make sure the that the time. enemy cannot afford you. If you are weak towards the rich men, the devil will set you up. If you are rich towards the fine girls, intelligent women, whatever it is that catches you, that's exactly. And it's not because the rich man is going to stay with no, you. No, 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 no. It's just so that you are the object. You are the object. You Your salvation the is yes. a target. Yes. As soon as you are defiled, then the, the rich man walks away. He walks away. away. They never stay because you are the one yeah. that the enemy really wanted. Anyway, that was the sermon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pastor Tunde has joined. Oh. Uh, so it's so good to have you. Uh, <laughs> yes. Antijade page number 25. Okay. Number 25, Antijade, I'm reading it to you now. <laughs> Becoming one is a process. Don't rush the process of it. Move from friendship to soulmates. Don't be afraid of difficult conversation. Marriage is beyond body love. It's a friendship that's progressive. Oh. Was that too long? Should I repeat it? Mm-hmm. I will. Becoming one is a progress. Malva a nearly process. process. Malva nearly killed me over these 25 years with oneness. I almost lost my mind. Yeah, because oneness is supposed to be uncool. Oh, we should wear God. the same thing. Please. If we walk into a place, say, behold, that's Mr. Only, and Mrs. That's not even the one list that, my, that you were talking about. Okay. My husband really wanted me to be a female version of him. Yeah, drink coffee like I drink coffee. Not only coffee, function. So my husband, until I, I, I helped him to be liberated. You know that old school style of your enemy is my enemy? No. Your enemy is your enemy. If you have chosen to fight, you shall fight alone. I am man. I'm not going to inherit your enemies. I'm not going to inherit your war. No, that's not oneness. That's temperament. <laughs> Somebody just did what? Yes, that's. Uh, I'm sure it's a bit to do something. Okay. He, just, he just got it. Okay. Temperaments are different. We are progressively moving towards becoming one. It's not one day. You see that simple thing that Apostle Paul said it doing. Jesus said it that they will become one flesh. Mm. It's not a deal. Becoming, 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 it's a journey. Don't rush it. Mm. Don't pretend about it. I said, move from friendship to soulmate. Even that is a process. It's a journey. It's a journey. You're going to have to understand your strength and your weakness. Accept your stress. I mean, accept your strength. Accept his strength. Pull it together. Manage the team. weaknesses. Manage the weaknesses. I'm, I'm, I'm praying about, about the ugly side. Amen. 
And here's the other thing. Remember last week we said something like this, mm -hmm. that to be different is not wrong. Absolutely. So she's different from me and I'm different from her. Yeah. Her enemies, I would take them on. I won't even tell you. I don't want uh -huh. you to She won't tell me because I'll take them on. Mm -hmm. And even when she has forgiven them, will I will not this let them go. Is this your MC that is there? This MC. Mark in the, yeah, it could be. Okay. Uh, okay. You know, I, I will let them go. That's my own style. Mm -hmm. You know, so for a long while, I was expecting the same thing from ah, her. It is, it is. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah, I'm so sure you know. Your, yeah, enemy, your, your enemy is my enemy. <laughs> I will deal with that until we get to the other no, side. No, no, no. See, 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 it's the complement mm -hmm. of divine arrangement. Mm -hmm. There are people that may take undue advantage of the fact that you can easily let go. Mm -hmm. And it is the fright of my reprimand yeah. that will keep them in check. Mm -hmm. And it's in the same way that some people may not find me as super approachable. Mm -hmm. And it is your openness yes. that will be their attraction. Mm -hmm. It's when they now come in, they realize that, mm -hmm. oh, it's quite comical. Yes. It just jokes. It's yes. quite, uh, oh, yes. I didn't know you are like that from yes. afar. I thought you were just one uh, statue of liberty. <laughs> you know, like, so truth be told, um, protect yourself. Was again, is me. My husband is my <laughs> <laughs> You know, because sincerely, um, the, the reason God puts us together mm -hmm. is some of the things that we have in differential. True. So that when we now bring them together, all 10 fingers mm -hmm. will now become complete. Yeah, I mean, if you only have what I have mm -hmm. and don't have what I don't have, yes. then there's no value addition. Yes. You know, but uh, when we come together like this, I can still remember somebody very dear and authoritative to my life uh, had offended my wife. And when I got home, when I got home, I could tell something was wrong. And I asked her, "What's wrong?" She said, "Nothing." I kept pressing. Then she said, uh, uh, "Promise me you won't say a word." I said, "I promise." She said, "No, swear you won't say a word." I'm like, "I, I didn't say swear. Don't swear." She said, "Swear." I didn't say swear. So I said, "Cross my heart." Then I said, "I won't hope to die." <laughs> <laughs> then she now told me what the person said or what the person did. I was so infuriated. You know, so what I did was I went into my whatever and I wrote a long note mm -hmm. to the person. When my wife found out that I wrote to the person, she said, but you promised me we're not going to say a word. I said, I didn't break my promise. I didn't say the word. I just wrote the word. And guess what? It drove the point home mm -hmm. that he is a good man, but his wife is his weak spot. Yeah. Don't touch his wife. Yes. You touch his wife, yes. uh, you bring out the part of him that you won't like. like. And I think that every woman deserves to, to feel that protected and, and covered. Yeah. It, 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 you're welcome. You know, it, it's it's, so, it's also so important, particularly yeah. with your family members. Yes. Don't open up your wife to your to family, to be ridiculed, to be spoken of badly, even to your hearing. Oh, yeah. And you join in the cracking of the jokes. Don't do it. You know, so um, our differences is for compliment. Mm -hmm. So there are people that may have been wrongly brushed mm -hmm. by my own approach. Her own softness is what will help to bring them back. And then there are others who will be too close and whatever, whatever. I just read one of my whatever. I'll stutter a bit. You just know that guy temperature don't change. And then God has put us together for a perfect arrangement so that he can have a powerful tool for an end time uh, conquest of this generation. Awesome. Praise God. Awesome. Praise God. So I said, um, becoming one is a process. Don't rush the process. Move from friendship to soulmate. That's and that's difficult sometimes. Easy. You know, with her, it was a bit difficult, you mm -hmm. know, because when you want to be soulmate with someone, that thinks that you are talking too much. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. Miss Sweet Conversation is. <laughs> I'll be telling my wife sometimes, my wife would go like, honey, 1,000. <laughs> One thousand time. I'm like, you mean I've told you that before? He said, yes, a hundred thousand times. I said, okay, let me clarify something. Did I deviate in the narrative? She said, no. I said, so that means I'm always telling you the truth. He said, I have no problem with the truthfulness of it. It is a repetition. My ear is, all right, okay, okay, all right. 
So we must define what soul means. Mm. It's the capacity to dwell with somebody mm. that you are giving generous details and the person is wishing for summary. Mm. Mm. Yes, that's good definition. I told him I want to arrest this English teacher because the guy did not get the concept of summary right. <laughs> Hi, I'm still looking for the guy, whoever he is. <laughs> yeah, and then I said, becoming involves having difficult conversations. I still am feeling like that. I don't know why I can't have difficult conversations. And that is still an area that I want to work on. Yeah. Oh, you love me so much. Oh, yes. I, I need to learn to have difficult conversation. I don't know. I can have difficult conversation with people generally. I'm not afraid of people. I don't know what it is. But uh, why do you think I can't have difficult conversation? Maybe a preconceived conversation. Yeah, maybe. Uh... Mother used to be a bully in the first few years of our marriage. He used to bully me a lot. No. He pushed the age agenda so much. No, it's... I would write him a letter because I couldn't talk to him. He doesn't listen well. So while you are talking, he's shaking his body, he's shaking his head. Everything is shaking so you know you're not being listened to. So I let, this guy does not listen. So I go and I write a note. I write my heart out. You know what happens when I submit my letter to my principal? He will get a red bio. He will start underlining it. You don't use this word for your husband. Is your head and your king. Is your father. And then, so I shut down talking to him. I literally... <laughs> Thank you, Father God. I shut down. <laughs> Literally, I'm telling you about my own 25 years. When you are ready, talk about your I could not. But by, by the time he realized that she's having difficulty communi communicating, he started working so hard. That's when I realized that even I may have some problem, right? When I shut down anything and it takes so long to open it up, that's the truth. I can't lie. That in the course of our marriage, I didn't shut down emotionally. You, you don't just did. shut down. You're an exitist. I because you don't fight, mm, you exit. Yes. And then I come into the emotional room and I'm looking for you. And mm -hmm. you are nowhere to be found. Yeah. You know, and um, and of course, this is the process. Mm, that, that becoming. Yeah, that about becoming. Please mm. get this. Mm. Commitment must be a padlock mm. that the key has been thrown away. So that once you are committed to one another, the issue of now adjusting to yourselves becomes an inevitable thing that you got to do. You try it this way, it doesn't align. Then you try it this way, it doesn't align. Then you try it that way. You just keep trying. Why? Because you are committed. Because for me, the things she called bullying was me making my point. You know, um, if I've made my point, and she's very good. If she can't give you a good defense, she goes into generalization. You always, you <laughs> never have. And I'm like, okay, hold on. When does always start? Can you put a date to always? Never. Is it never from 19, 1999 or never from yesterday? I need to understand never as per day. So you see, you're not taking me seriously. You're not even listening to what I'm saying. I said, no, I am listening. You know, but... Truth be told, every man should learn to laugh at himself in his own marriage. Mm -hmm. Laugh at yourself. Don't take yourself too seriously. Mm -hmm. Don't be too determined that I must win this argument. Mm -hmm. Remember, mm -hmm. you are you are you are you are trying to gain fusion, mm -hmm. oneness with this person. Mm -hmm. It is only the extent to which she feels you and you feel her mm. that other things will follow. Yeah. You know, like, okay, my, my, my in-law is here. I can't go too far. No, Auntie no. Jade, you are the reason. No, ah, before <laughs> they come, call me to family meeting. <laughs> so your dowry needs to be repaired, <laughs> you, know. you know. But the truth, uh, the truth is this, that the, the other things we, you enjoy in marriage, mm -hmm. they, can, they can hang or be truncated by the fact that you are not in alignment Absolutely. with each other. You know, I was just going to say that about sex. When you hear that, oh, your auntie is here. You no, can't stop saying She knows I do. She knows. Said, so please please feel very free. Feel very free to stay. If you have kept up for 25 years and have not had any cause to come and remove your teeth, she will tell you, 
I am me like that. I protect those who I love. If anybody messes with them, their husband or their wife, they have me to contend with. And if you have I'm done me. this well for 25 years, man. you are free to say everything, my in law. Very, yes. very free. <laughs> we are learning from you. We are learning. So please thank feel you, free. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank thank you. you. So I was saying yeah. about sex yeah. that when there is a club in the sexual relationship, yeah. find out what has happened to the one this journey. Yeah. It's amazing how they are all interwoven. Do yeah. you understand? A woman, especially a woman, cannot be herself fully sexually if something is on her. Mm -hmm. So she's just going to be mechanical with you. I have to do this. is my duty. I'm going to do a duty. That's why we say having sex is different from love. Exactly. They are not one and they the same. They are not the same. So she's having sex with you because I must do it. Mm -hmm. It's my duty. But when the wife is making love, or I mean making love with her husband, mm -hmm. is because there's no holds back. Mm -hmm. Nothing. There are no undiscussed issues. Even if it has not been resolved, mm -hmm. she has spoken her mind. Mm -hmm. You understand? And she knows she has been heard. Whether that thing gets you or not, she has been able to. Speak. I, 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 I must give kudos uh, to you here that I think one of the things that married people should know, or for us men, is this that just letting your wife know that I am concerned with the fact that you don't look satisfied can just be enough for her. Yeah. Just for her to know that you are sincerely concerned. You might probe and probe because. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, I mean, see, remember in John 4, <laughs> the woman said to Jesus, the ah, it, You know this, what it takes to fetch a deep way. I'm telling you, you can start to that. Honey, are you okay? Mm. Mm -mm. Anything the matter? Mm -mm. Then I know there's a problem when there's hum and <laughs> monosyllables. Then you now keep digging. Okay, so tell me, what is it? Is this something that I have done? No answer. Uh, no, is this something that I have done? No. Is this something that I have said? No answer. Mark that no response to be yes. You keep digging and digging. And, and don't be tired. Don't be tired. All she wants to know is that it is safe to come out. Yeah. Can I be safe to tell you? Yeah. Can I tell you without incurring more problems yeah. from you? Your yeah. reaction is what I'm trying to avoid yeah. here. Yes. Can you really guarantee me that the reaction is going to be better this time? Yeah. And just you showing concern that I really want to know. I want you to be happy. I may not be perfect. God is almighty. None of us is almighty. Mm -hmm. But I want to know what it is that is the problem right now. Let, let me take care of it. And the more you are able to make her feel safe, uh, the sooner she will eventually now come out. True. You know, and when she comes out, um, <laughs> don't say something like, is that what you were coming oh on with? God. Because I'm telling you, some things come out and I'm like, Jesus Christ <laughs> of Nazareth. Maybe you would have loved the marriage where there's village quarrel and the neighbors would come and say, I'm not going to stop looking around the fight again. <laughs> but when you don't have that, and then you hear something like, when you're changing the the, 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 the TV channel, mm. you just change it without being mindful that a whole human being is here. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. Can I change the channel now? It may look small. Yeah. If it matters to the other person, let it matter to you oh, as well. Oh, I love to be talked to with so much respect. The tone, that excuse me, that thank <coughs> you. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm serious on that excuse me, that thank you, that I'm going to bed and you know that the volume of the TV bothers me. Mm -hmm. Oh, it took so long. And maybe we, I wasn't even telling you, but I was using, you know, doing body, body language. language and you were not picking it. But when you started picking it, it just helped me to know that you're genuinely concerned about me. She needs to sleep. I don't sleep where there's light, too much light. I don't sleep with TV volume. And he does I all like of lights. those. He loves light. He loves I like volume. the noise. I love the volume. All of it is like what he If I'm watching TV, there. I don't want to read their lips. <laughs> I want surround system. <laughs> yeah. My wife. But no. he, he, he part yeah. of that becoming, that part yes. of that journey yes. is to know that I don't want master's bedroom and mistress bedroom. bedroom. I want us to be together. Mm -hmm. Whatever is going to be take, I will do to make it complete. Ah, no, no, no. You deserve more. Oh, no. hallelujah. Okay. Um, <laughs> we've done our five numbers. Yes, uh, I would like to keep it trained yes. so that. Uh, Any questions? Yes. Yeah, so, want to take your questions. Uh, you can fire straight at her, or you oh, can yeah. you can 
Okay. You can throw at me, but fire at her. <laughs> can you? So she was the main speaker today. Okay. <laughs> so what are your questions? Thank you, Bola. And all love hearts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions, please? Either for out of what has been said today or something else that has been on your own mind from your own immediate situation, whether yours or a friend's. You know, one way to ask a question in a public place to say a friend of mine <laughs> has this problem. You know, so any questions? Who be, and then uh, in this occasion, I think you can unmute if you want to ask your question. You can unmute so that... Uh, Yes, who has a question? I am um, Pastor okay. and Pastor Mrs. Yes, yes interestingly, interestingly, I have my cleaning lady here okay. who was just rounding up when I joined you. Okay. And she's been listening. And she has a question because oh. um, she has some situation at home. Okay. And she's been listening to you guys and enjoying what you say. So I asked her when you said, do you have a question? I said, do you have a question? Don't be shy. You hear these uh -huh. are people who are 25 years in marriage and not just that. There'll be <laughs> one thing or the other to learn. You've been how many years now? 14 years. 14 years in marriage. And there are some serious issues. Uh, she, okay. may not, she may not feel free to say everything here. I might arrange a talk with both of you later for her, but for now, I will just let her ask her question. Oh, yeah? Okay, okay ma'am. I hear you people say that is your, if your S you are communicate with is not in the right, something like that. So I want to understand it's not the best for me to communicate with them? Yes, ma. What we are saying is that when you have the option to always communicate mm -hmm. with your ex, that is your yeah. ex, somebody you dated before you married your husband, um, it's not even good to communicate with them, not as if you are keeping quarrel, no, not like you will mm -hmm. see them on the road, you will pass. No, 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 no. That's not what we are saying. You are a good person, you should greet. How are you as your family? It's okay. But when every little quarrel between you and your husband now, you want to go and tell the man. Mm -hmm. Every time you don't have money, you want to call the man and say, I beg, give me money. This my husband is not giving me money. You are erecting another calf and you will worship it. I've come to know that there is no free cookie in this life. If you, there, even in free town, there is no free food. Especially if there has ever been sex, sex between, between you between, and that yes, person. Yeah. Sex in the past is like a door without key. You will just, if you just push it, it will just open. swing mm. open, mm. back and forth. Mm. You know, and the fact that you are no longer his responsibility. Mm. You are the responsibility of your husband. Mm. If he gets the opportunity to chop you, mm. he will chop you free of charge. Yeah, and you. the devil knows that the pele from him will sound better than the pele from an ordinary neighbor. Mm. And that's why the enemy will keep pushing you back there. Yeah. The best way for you to find pure water to drink in your marriage mm. is to close the door to all the dirty waters. Yes. Just close it. Yes. And just tell God, if you can't give me another person to pour pure water in my hands, yeah. then I'll just look up to you yeah. in this particular situation because exes, they can become axes. Mm. They can become cutlass mm. to break what you have. Yeah. And uh, if you are very, very offended with your husband, any consolation from the ex will look justifiable. Mm. But we are speaking from a Christian standpoint. That even when it looks justifiable, it is destroying your salvation to heaven. Mm -hmm. I want to ask another question. I am very blessed with this answer. Thank you. And Thank I will pick up. And I will yeah. go on with it. My second question, he's not giving me food. He's not taking care of me and my children. And I'm struggling to see, to put things in order. And I'm be covering him. But when he go and 
drawn outside. You will come inside and be beating me and my children. No, it's wrong. How do you want me to cope with that? I okay. need you to encourage me. Okay. So, you see, for everything that we have said, there are exceptions to the rule. When a husband does not understand his role as a husband, that guy is not a husband. I was meditating on the word of God that says that a man, a husband, a husband is the head of his wife. It's, it didn't say a man is the head of a woman. He said the husband, mm -hmm. when you play your role as a husband, that's when you are at the head of your wife. If he is beating you, that one is not a husband. That's not a husband. A man that will lift up his hand and beat a woman is not a husband. If you don't know how to be a husband, go and learn it. If he's beating you, he can kill you. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. So that we don't scare you. No, because I was going somewhere yeah. that he sh she needs an outlet. Mm -hmm. She should not keep quiet I with agree. a beating husband. I totally agree. She, he yes. may have, I'm sorry to yes. continue you, he may have his brother, yes. somebody that he listens to. That shame will come on him if it ever went out there. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to embarrass him. Mm -hmm. Now she says she covers him. You're not supposed to cover a beating husband. husband. It's true. But you see, um, I come from a family where I saw all of this. I saw a father that was drunk. I saw a father that once he came home drunk, uh, he started lashing out and beating up on people. But I also saw a mother that understood that my husband is drunk. This is not the real him talking. So when he comes back home in the night and he's making all of those loud, whatever, she doesn't reply him because she knows this is not him talking, it's the alcohol. Number two, she has lived with him for so many years and she knows he drinks on empty stomach and if he doesn't eat before he goes to bed with that alcohol, from the next day, malaria will start. So as soon as she comes back and he's doing all of those, whatever, her only focus is to just go and put some food on that table. And once she has put the food on the table, she goes into either a, a, any of the children's room and she just goes in there and lock herself up. Once the man has finished it, he goes to sleep. And it's amazing. He wakes up the following morning. He has no trace of all the wahala, the thunder that he brought to the house because of drinking. But that came because our mother now understood how to respond to this evil habit. So I'm going to beg of you, when he is drunk, don't try to have a logical conversation with him. When he's in that state, don't try to exchange with him. If, he, if, he, if his stomach is okay when he's drunk, just go and look for somewhere to go and sleep, you know, and, and just ignore him so that when he sobers up, no damage would have been done during his drunken state that cannot be repaired. It's very important because the children, they may not be able to say anything, but they suffer emotional damage. Their minds get scarred. They grow up not, they grow up getting the wrong perception of what life, marriage, husband and wives are. And you can help to avoid all of that. Yeah, Amen. But you know that a lot of people. Man of God. Just Man of God. One second, please. One minute. Second. Okay. A lot of wives have died. And you know, I say to you often that something must be done to speak to the men in this generation. Yes, I think to. women have been taught, nurtured, managed, but they died. Women died in this extreme situation. The day she does not answer him, you come home drunk. I think a lot of people indulge continuously where there's no uh, repercussion. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. When there's no repercussion, you know, I've checked you, I've checked. If this same man that comes home and beats her every day, if, for example, he was married to Dangote's daughter, he won't touch her because he knows that they will send Mopo, they will pack him and beat him. But he has checked her out. So, while we're advising her mm -hmm. to stay in the good wife, place because of our children because of herself we need to save our soul by saying who can talk to him who can in that moment that is not drunk who can 
help him know that you will kill this woman if you continue like that. I think that's the balance that we need to bring. I, I, I agree with you. And pray for the conversion of his soul, you know, because um, a lot of people continue with what destroyed their great great grandfather yeah. in this modern age. Yeah. But only salvation can truly pull them away mm. from those uh, from those evil evil habits. You know, praise God. Thank you, Sister Jade, for allowing us to talk to your uh, to your cleaning lady. Thank, so, thank, so you. Much. thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, I I think she really took something away from here because um, um she's 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 been saying a lot to me since yesterday. I, you know. God has a way of just allowing things. She should have gone, but the, it's raining here in Abuja and she's not been able to leave. So when this came on, I said, okay, they're talking about marriage. You may come and join me and listen to what's been said, you know, yeah. and I'm glad that, you know, she, she, she was um, at least interested enough to ask some of the questions on our mind. So thank you very much for this. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, man. Yes. Uh, Dio Gold has a question. Dio Gold, you may unmute. Okay. Good evening, Sarah Ma. Thank you so much. I wish that my husband is there, but I'm recording this for him. <laughs> yeah. So I'm married to a wonderful man. And to be honest, I think we have a great marriage. So I'm going to go back to where... Pastor Ken said, he's the no-nonsense person. You can't come close to his wife. He would have to like set boundaries. So my husband, on the other hand, is a very calm and sweet person. He's so sweet that sometimes I feel like people take advantage of his person. So a lot of people find him more um, relatable, like they want to approach him more. In fact, people love him more, but in his own sense, like when we're talking in the house, my husband will be like, I wish they knew how sweet my, my wife is. It's just that she's a no-nonsense person. In fact, when it comes to certain things, because we have learned to um, appreciate our strength. So when there are things that I need to come into the picture, my husband will let me. And then especially when it comes to talking, because I'm a very blunt and plain person. So sometimes when we have to have conversations around some tough issues, especially when it has to do with third party, I would just ask my husband, can I talk? Then if he says yes, then I, I know that yes, it's, it's okay with whatever comes out of my mouth. But I have a challenge with my husband in the sense that his calmness, his gentleness can also be um, an issue, especially when it comes to third party. My in-laws are amazing, but I mean, we have like a family friend who is also very dear to us. They've been a part of our journey, but recently they did something that really took me off. And um, it was obvious that they were wrong. I'm not saying that I, because you know, I'm, I'm, last week when Pastor Ken said, you have to put the searchlight on yourself. I do that a lot. And we do that a lot in my home. So, um, but my husband struggles with calling out things like, you know what? My wife might have done this, but this was what you did that led to this point, right? Rather, it would focus on the fact, like when he's talking to the third party, it would focus on the fact that, oh, Emma Binu, Emma, Emma, Emma Sha Binu, when in the actual sense, you're supposed to eat the nail on the head to say that. And this is why this, my wife has also reacted this way, but at the end of the day, it happened because of X, Y, Z. So I always feel like you don't defend me. You don't, you don't stand up for me. You're always about what people perceive of you. You want them to think you're the good person in this home while I'm the other, I'm like, I'm the, I'm the one with the coconut head, you know? And so it, it hurts me a lot. Meanwhile, if reverse was the case, I would stand like nobody did, nobody can come close to my husband. They will not even the way you said it, nobody. nobody. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> nobody will come close to him. And you know, there are some fights that I've even fought for him just because it's him. My husband, I can fight for my husband now. And sir, you will find out that the person that I fought with, my husband is already talking to the person the next day. I'm like, what? Is, what is going 
one here. And, and I, I'm always like, you're making me feel like I'm the bad person. Let's call a spade a spade where it needs to be. But my man would never. And then at the end of the day, there was a day I was crying. I said, I wish I can just let you fight your battle on your own by yourself. And you know what? He appreciates the fact that I'm always standing up for him. Like there was a day in church, something happened. And then I just told the person off immediately. No, I wasn't rude. I just said, no, you don't do that to my husband. When we got to my husband said, how did you do that? I wish I can be like that. You know? But this little issue, it hurts me a lot. Like today. Okay, let me just let me. Okay, yeah, because our time is up. But round up quickly, please. Okay, so for instance, we have like a family gathering. Like the person has um a party today. I told my husband, I'm not going. And truth, truth be told, I have forgiven them. But in my head, I'm like, how can you go for this party? And me, I told you I'm not going. I'm at home, Moya's gone. And it's just, it's just bothering me like, what is this? You know, I have to tell myself that, you know what? I don't want this thing to be causing issues because really I have a great marriage. But what, that one thing can be so annoying for me. I always feel cheated. Like I give you my heart. I fight, fight your battles, but you always want to be on the good book of people. And it hurts a lot. So okay. I want to come back to Pastor Tinu. Why? Mm-hmm. Because Pastor Tinu says she doesn't, she's not someone that is, um, she doesn't like to confront issues why and then let me, let me help you dear god at least from my perspective oh no i i even wanted to start before uh mama would now round up on it by letting you know that uh between us she is the public retreat i am the defender of the universe <laughs> it is our difference she can never be like me she doesn't have the nerves to carry that particular expression you know, and the gentility of her own being. She has trained with six siblings. She carries it well. When she needs to draw a boundary, she will draw it. If she doesn't stand with me to fight, at the beginning of this 25 years, uh-huh. it used to look like you were there. You even noticed that someone was talking to me like, and he didn't speak up. Then later it dawned on me that that is not who she is. She is not keeping quiet and refusing to fight because it's your fight. She doesn't fight. So I just had to learn that this is her person. She's not trying to, uh, this is why I said that she speaks first. She's not trying to look good to others. No, no, no. It is just who she is. It is just who she is. That's just the truth. She means no harm and I shouldn't criminalize that disposition because I wish she was fighting like I'm fighting. And l- let me be frank with you, there had been fights that I took on on her behalf that she didn't like because she just felt she went overboard with that, with that whatever. Say, overboard? Ah, no, overboard? Ah, you're lucky that I didn't call for a tsunami. You know, ah, no, 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 no. Ah, they're, they're still walking. I didn't put them in a wheelchair. Ah, overboard? Over, ah, no, 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 no. And then that becomes an argument between the two of us. Yeah. So over the years, I just had to learn we are different, but not wrong. She is not wrong being different from me. I am not wrong being different from her. So Diogo, your husband is not wrong being different from you. And you are not wrong being different from him. Play your role. Collect your credit Mm -hmm. in uh, in the way you do it to his appreciation. If you do the excess and it becomes minus, you pull yourself back. Let him play his own role without you taking offense at how he does it. I know it is... What are we talking about? I raised this issue as a subject in the Marie Training Institute in Abuja. And I gave them Abraham, uh, Sarah, and uh, Hagar as my illustration point. And I gave them homework. Should you support your husband or support your spouse against all outsiders? Because when Abraham was going to take side with Hagar, God said to Abraham, send Hagar away. Out of a class of 17 persons, 50 no, 50% didn't agree that you should support your spouse in everything. I was of the opinion that you should support your spouse in everything, but we are all different. You know, it is your capacity to keep respecting him 
respecting his uniqueness, mm -hmm. appreciating how he does what he does that is different from how you do it. That's what will keep him appreciating you. Otherwise, you take up these third party matters with him and the two of you will lose alignment. Yes. You'll be losing value. And meanwhile, the people who are defending their they are gone. gone. And let me uh, and it becomes a matter of two. Let, uh, what, let me snitch for you. <laughs> There's nothing as dangerous to the marriage and the romance in that marriage as when your husband secretly just feels, hmm, what kind of problem do I get myself into? Mm -hmm. And they won't say it. They just feel she just wants to do so. Why can't she be a person of peace? The fruit of the spirit is gentleness, not fighting. Absolutely. The fruit of the spirit is covering sins and iniquity. It is not exposing them. It's not repeating matters. Okay. So while we are all growing and we are work in progress, learn this secret. Let him be him in his own way yeah. and keep respecting him. You do yours and do it in such a way that you gain credit from him, not in a way that will offend him and you just wish, I wish I didn't tell, tell her about that particular matter. The truth of the matter is because I feared for my husband's then I would not tell him even things that would hurt that I wish I could say. Only let me tell you this thing, but this is how I want it to react. I'll be taken away from his own personality because, in all fairness, protecting me is the biggest deal for him. So I feel I'm doing people a favor by not even that you just die for nothing. You will meet nobody who will see you again. It's the truth because I know he has it in him to protect me so much. But now, now I um, we we know ourselves better. I mean, years. Yes, we know ourselves better. I can say on it, I'm going to tell you something and I don't want, want you to, to talk react. about it. I don't want it to react. And no matter how he feels, he knows for me to say it, that's it. He wants to react and listen. You know, so that's it. Please manage him, understand him, and he needs to understand you too. God put you together as a team, and everything is important. The striker, the midfielder, mm -hmm. the goalkeeper, the defense, the defense they all have the part they play, and you will need all of them as the journey progresses. And uh, if, if, the, if the place where the party is holding is not too far, sure. dress up and show up. True. And when, you, make when you get there, just put a kiss on his uh, lips and yeah. tell him, I was already missing you saying at home alone. Exactly. You know, and just be shocked. Yeah. That will be smiling. Smile on his face. And you can never tell what will happen after 11. That miracles can happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ma. I love you both so much. <laughs> All right, for the round up. All right. Thank you so very much. We really hope this has been a blessing. Please help us share the link. We really, really know that there are so many people out there who need this content. Is like Pastor Sunday was applauding us. He said he loves the sync and the openness. Amen. And that's what we want to achieve with this. Not to create that we are the perfect people, but we are the people God has helped. If we're looking for reasons not to be here, we had over 25,000 reasons. But we are glad that we walk with the Spirit of God. We are loving one another more and more, working together. And you can, you, you can see I'm gray now. She, uh, he wasn't this gray. I wasn't this, this gray when I met her. But he's handsome. He's handsome with the gray. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So thank you so very much thank for being with us so today. Much. We appreciate right. you. Okay. Auntie you Jade, me. so so <laughs> glad to have you. And thank <laughs> you for your love and your support. But for today, we appreciate each and every one of you. Yeah. My beloved woman of God, Pastor Bolanle, Pastor Christy, so glad. Ah, and my sister, Paula oh, wow. oh. the, the The kinkiest. Grandma, oh, and I, grandma, to to is grandma, grandma, not grandma, is grandma. <laughs> my boss is here. Wow. Someone is here. Is here. Good to see you, sir. See you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you know, awesome. so next week, uh, Saturday, awesome. it will be another episode. Yeah. Thank you, our daughter is happy. Yeah. You know, uh, Osamui. Yeah. You know, so thank you all for coming. Please share the link and invite someone to the fourth episode yeah. of this five part narrative on 25 lessons that we have learned in 25 years. Yeah. Thank you. Our time is really so fast, man, but there's so many people. That we, we we don't want to leave any, uh, anyone. My cousin out. engineer Namome. Yeah. Holy Mamo, I'm oh, so glad you could exactly. make it. Wow. Debayo, Doctor Shebu, yes. Eliza, wow. Nicholas, and Elor, Volanle, Dimbo, Sister Shade, Tayo, 
Ibido, Ibido, yes. in some way controlling yes. everything. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Thank so you. Much. we Father, love pray you. For us. Father, we are so grateful for the leading of the help of the Holy Spirit. It's not possible to overcome this journey without you. We acknowledge you as the one before us. We acknowledge you as the one with us. And we acknowledge you as the one behind us. Thank you for every stormy. Thank you for every council. Mm -hmm. Thank you for every single day of 25 years. We return the glory of the lessons to you. It's all about you. We commit the many years ahead you, Jesus, tiring to your hands. Do what only you can do in the name of Jesus. Everyone who has come, oh God, I pray, oh God, we pray that they would have picked one thing to, to use to make their own union better in the mighty name of Jesus. May the word that have come out of our mouths be as a light in their situation, Amen. shattering every darkness yes, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because marriages will get coming to revival, Amen. that marriages will not be a pain in your heart, but a joy and a delight to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. We bless you. We declare that no home will be scattered. Amen. No language will be divided. Amen. The enemy is checked out Amen. and it will never come back Amen. in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. All right, God bless you. See you next week.